Hey there, guys. Welcome to another video on X's and O's with Average Joe's. And today we're going to be going over John Bones Fassel. He's currently the special teams coordinator for the Dallas Cowboys, uh, recently with the Rams in the early McVay days and also some of the Jeff Fisher days. Uh, he provides some great ideas, including many, many fakes. Uh, but we're going to dive into just how much special teams matters. A lot of people, I'm sure you've heard the quote, you know, special teams is a third of the game. A lot of people seem to discount how much special teams means to football, uh, but in terms of field position, in terms of scoring, uh, special teams matters more than I think most people believe it does. And we're going to show you why. And then at the end, we're going to show you some of the awesome fakes that John Bones Fassel comes up with. And uh, this will include my favorite play in NFL history. Stay tuned. To really show the impact of special teams, we're going to look at one of the most extreme cases of all time in the 2010 Chargers. Not only were th was this one of the worst special teams units of the decade, it was actually graded out as the second worst special teams of all time, including tons of penalties and miscues. This Chargers team is just one of the weirdest teams in history to never make the playoffs. Not only did they finish as the number one offense in the league, they finished as the number one defense and didn't make the playoffs due to a two and five start where they blew several games due to special teams blunders in games that they lost by one score. The clips that really got the Chargers into that two and five hole to start off the season. It's astronomically biblical, some of these plays, especially considering that they happened, you know, back to back weeks throughout the entire beginning part of the season. Uh, and I can promise you one thing, you know, if, if John Fassel is your special teams coordinator, none of these plays are happening. He doesn't, he doesn't put up with the BS that the Chargers seem to put up with at the beginning of the year. So we'll start off with going over the week one clips that really did cost the Chargers this game. Uh, all three are going to be punt returns. This game was absolutely crazy in terms of special teams. Chargers allowed 160 punt return yards in one game, which is nuts. Uh, to put that into perspective, the 2013 Chargers as a team the entire season had 163 yards in punt returns. So the Chiefs nearly matched what the 2013 Chargers had in punt return yardage uh, in one game. Uh, they had two turns by Javier Arenas and one return by Dexter McCluster, which was right before half. I uh, went all the way down the field, set a Chiefs franchise record for uh, the longest punt return in Chiefs history. And uh, to most Chargers fans, this play is known as the Dexter McCluster fuck. So after week two, we had to wait all the way until week three to get another special teams blunder. And not only did we get one, but we got two. Uh, so the Chargers in week three had to go up to Seattle and play there. And who would have guessed that the player of the game would be Leon Washington. Seattle's kick returner brought back two kick returns in this game and put the game away with the go-ahead touchdown with six minutes to go, uh, following, <laughs> following an absolutely brutal display of tackling by the Chargers. And this is just... Pretty ironic. This is exactly how their special teams went all year. The Chargers got a break from the antics for one week, but things picked right back up where they left off in week five. Where on the opening punt of the game, they had it blocked. And if you think that's bad enough, on their second possession of the game, that punt was also blocked. Just, <laughs> just inconceivable ways to start the game. That just puts them in almost insurmountable holes. Not to mention that they also had two special teams penalties in that game as well. Just putting their offense and defense in terrible holes that almost no team can come back from. In week seven of this year, the Chargers hosted the New England Patriots, and it was actually a really good game. Uh, the Chargers were only down three points. Uh, New England had the ball. They were going to decide to go for it on fourth down with under two minutes to go. If they got the first down, the game was over. If they got stopped, the Chargers would have a chance to go down and win the game with a touchdown. The Chargers defense ended up stopping them as they were the number one defense that year. So after stopping them, the Chargers completed a few passes to guys like Antonio Gates, uh, some other receivers that they had, and then they lined up for a 45-yard field goal. And before they could take the 45-yard field goal to send it to overtime, their tackle fall started. Luis Vasquez moved a little bit early and backed it up to make it a 50-yard attempt. Well, on that 50-yard attempt to tie and send the game to OT, they hit an upright. And it was just extremely telling of how that year was going. I mean, from 45, the kick ends up going in. But from 50, it's going to hit an upright and it's going to bounce out. And just very telling for how the special teams went all year. The following week was really the icing on the cake to their 2-5 and five start as they were playing the Tennessee Titans and had, once again, a blocked punt, which this time resulted in the safety. 
this special teams unit was unbelievably bad, giving up 19 penalties and 22 missed tackles throughout the entire season. You really have to mess it up and be one of the worst special teams units of all time, as they were the second worst to have the number one scoring offense and defense miss the playoffs. It's unbelievable. It really shows special teams is one third of the game. So now that you know just how important special teams is, I'm going to let you know just how vital special teams coordinators can be and who I believe the most vital special teams coordinator is. His name is John Bones Fassel. John actually grew up in football. His dad was an NFL coach for the New York Giants, uh, even led him to a Super Bowl. Uh, was kind of always hanging around, uh, played football growing up, made a preseason roster in 1999, uh, didn't make the team. Kind of knew he wanted to go into coaching just like his father. Uh, so he ended up becoming a special teams coordinator, uh, started in Oakland, um, kind of is doing some grunt work, you know, assistant special teams worked his way up um, and worked with a ton of future Hall of Famers there. Um, before then going to the Rams uh, with the Jeff Fisher days, uh, lasted all throughout there. And then when McVay came in, he pretty much fired everybody except he kept Bones. So he's been there for the entire McVay saga. And now he's with the Cowboys. Um, so his accolades are insane. So he's coached 17 pro bowlers, uh, which is just insane, including a few undrafted guys like Hecker, uh, and, and a few long snappers. And he's also worked with a lot of kickers who were late draft picks, including Greg, the leg Zerline. He was like a sixth round pick, I believe. Um, and he's turned them into pro bowlers. It's just amazing what he's been able to do for their careers. He was also on the staff in Oakland as an assistant special teams coordinator, uh, when they had their entire field goal battery make a Pro Bowl, which is absolutely unheard of. So they had their long snapper, their punter, and their kicker all make the Pro Bowl in the same year, which is insane. And yes, it helps. You got two future Hall of Famers there in Janny, Janikowski and uh, Leckler, but still it's a crazy feat. And we're going to dive into just what Fassel does for a special teams unit and then kind of the tricks he still has up his sleeve that he likes to whip out from time to time. It really is amazing how good John Fossil's done in his first year as the Dallas Cowboys special teams coordinator. To really show his impact, let's look at the 2019 and 2020 special teams rankings to compare. So in 2019, their kick return average was 16.25 yards return, which was 32nd in the entire league. On their punt return average, it was an average of 5.7 yards per return, which is 26th in the league. Their net punt ranking was 36.96 yards, which was last in the league as well. And they allowed 4.62 yards per return on punts, which was just completely awful to put their special teams unit as one of the worst in the entire league. So in 2020, they got John Fossil, and their kick return skyrocketed to 26.08, which was third in the entire league. Their punt return average jumped up to 9.14 to about a league average with 13th in the league. Their net punt also jumped up to 41.16, and their punt return yards allowed was one of the best in the league at 3.84. And in just one season with not major changes in personnel, this is really impressive for him to pull off. It shows why he's one of the best coordinators in the entire league. Having John Fossil as your special teams coordinator comes with a plethora of trick plays and a whole bunch of fakes the defense needs to be accounted for. With the Saints knowing this, they have a guy lined up over the personal protector, leaving a guy, a gunner one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. And having the personnel to be able to do this, the Rams have Johnny Hecker, who is one of the best punters in the league at throwing the ball outside and here anytime they get one-on-one -on -one with Johnny Hecker they're going to take it outside and just throw this curl route because they know the gunner on the outside really has to bail to uh, be on the punt return coverage. So the funny part about John Fassel being as aggressive as he is is it actually helps him in the long run. So when teams have to kind of account for him being aggressive they also have to play more heavily in the box. So like Alex said you're going to see a lot of guys in the box here and one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. The only reason that happens is because how aggressive John Fassel is. You know, if he were not a big fake punt guy and they didn't run too many, they'd probably be in a pretty base defense, have two gunners on the outside of the boundary. But here it's just easy pickings, especially for a good high school quarterback like Johnny Hecker. And, you know, personnel wise, it does help that they have Hecker, but I'd say most punters in the league could probably make this throw, especially as punters are getting more athletic. You're getting a lot of former high school receivers or quarterbacks uh, turning into punting because they're just such great athletes. And doesn't really matter personnel wise. If you can get this look and John Fassel seems to get it a lot, he'll take it all day, regardless of personnel. And it's just a great play call and a great alert to be ready for this style of punt return. So not only does John Bones Fassel draw up trick plays to run when they're punting, he's one of the few guys I've ever seen to have return trick plays and run them with great success. 
So here's a play. They got their third string quarterback in. I believe this was on Thanksgiving. They kind of need plays from their special teams and defense to keep them in it. And this is just wild. So Tavon Austin's going to go back, catch the punt, and then turn and throw it all the way across the field to one of his punt gunners who just ran straight backwards. And from there, since the defense was all on the other side of the field trying to worry about Tavon Austin, he gets a pretty clean lane, runs about 80 yards downfield, it seems, before getting tackled. And it's just a crazy, drawn-up schematic play and a just great example of what John Bones Fassel brings to that team as a special teams coordinator. The attention to detail in this play is outstanding. As you can see, C.J. Goodwin, the guy who ultimately ended up getting the toss from Tavon Austin's, lipping down the field to fake an injury, almost like he pulled a hamstring so everybody would get away from him. Like, not only if the trick didn't work enough, like, just on its own of coming one way and going back the other, but him faking the injury is just, like, the complete icing on the cake. And to be able to run stuff like this, you just have to have total trust in your special teams unit, having your former first-round wide receiver throw the ball 30-plus yards horizontally across the field just shows a tremendous trust in your players to be able to put them in those spots and make those incredible plays on special teams that end up flipping games. Part of being a good special teams coordinator is realizing that not every single trick play you run is going to work, and some of these are going to blow up in your face here in a pretty big game for the NFC East, despite both these teams being three and seven. Down four in the fourth quarter, the Cowboys try a very exotic trick punt with the gunner going in motion at the bottom of the screen, and they snap it to their gunner and then reverse it to the gunner on top of the field where they're supposed to throw it back to the punter and he ends up not throwing it and it turns into a colossal disaster and it leaves everyone wondering what happened. And when you run fake punts like that, it's not going to work every time and everyone's going to think you're an idiot, but when it works, you're a genius. So this is a pretty crazy one, but essentially here's what was supposed to happen. So they're sending that gunner to the bottom of the screen in motion and then he's running upfield, uh, you know, play the punt coverage and he wants to go tackle at least make him think he is so he kind of runs out of the play and tries to pull a defender away specifically that cor- that defensive gunner at the bottom from there they're going to snap to the personal punt protector and throw it in a reverse motion to a, the other gunner on the other side of the field as he's coming around to the bottom of the screen well this is happening the punter is actually running a wheel route so as it was explained in the post-game press conference The gunner with the ball, who essentially becomes the quarterback then, kind of has a high-low read on the bottom of the screen defender. If he jumps up a little bit, which he does, he's supposed to throw it to the punter. And if he stays back and plays the punter, he should have an easy reverse run uh, for about 10 yards, and he should get it. Well, trusting, you know, gunners or receivers, corners, whoever you have out there to be able to read a defender like a quarterback is asking a bit much at times. This is a lot of window dressing. It would have been cool if it worked, but, you know, not everything can work, and it blows up in his face and looks really bad and costs some points. So as a special teams coordinator, you got to be able to live with that, and I'd say the good with John Fass so far outweighs the bad. He'll be all right after this one. We also wish we could have shown the All-22, but shout out on a full game pass for having that go down with their brand-new update. Don't forget to cancel your subscription. So here we're going to get into John Bones Fassel's glory days with the Rams. This is actually my favorite play of all time in NFL history, other than, you know, playoff miracles and things of that nature. Just normal, regular season game, schematic X's and O's. This is my favorite play of all time. So John Ryan's going to catch a snap. He's going to just punt the ball. It, It nearly gets blocked and ruins, you know, my favorite play of all time. So I'm extremely happy they don't block it. And dynamic electric returner that everybody has to pay attention to, Tavon Austin. He's going to run to the bottom of the screen and fake that he's going to, you know, field this punt and catch the ball. Whereas Stedman Bailey runs down the top of the screen uh, as he was initially a gunner uh, and just kind of let his guy go towards Tavon. He's going to run straight down the field, act as if nothing's happening. And he's going to catch the ball over his shoulder and run down the opposite sideline after almost every Seahawk on the field is worried about Austin. He gets to run straight pretty much as blockers handle the rest of it. And this is just an awesome play. Very great way of tricking the entire special teams unit. I mean, they can't really see the punt. You know, use that electric dynamic returner as a decoy and and let your gunner go all the way down the field. It's just an absolutely great drawn-up play, and you can see Bones celebrating on the sideline there knowing he did something special. Yeah, this is one of the most creative plays of not only, like, the last decade, but of, like, all time on special teams. It's just really insane how much the defense is drawn to Tavon Austin, which is what we also saw in that Dallas game where he was the window dressing on the play, but 
this team inspired a lot of teams to steal it. Even Seattle, they stole it a couple of weeks later in a game against the Bears. And it just shows the uh, type of innovator John Fossil was around the league. Thank you guys for tuning in to another video with X's and O's with Average Joe's. We really do appreciate you guys spending your time with us on Sunday mornings uh, or really whenever you decide to watch this. Uh, keep in mind, we do release most of our videos, if not all of our videos on Sunday mornings. Uh, please like and subscribe. Uh, give us honest feedback in the comments, however we can get better. It's kind of our goal here. So if you have any constructive criticism, feel free to leave it in the comments section. We do check all of those. And then on top of that, if you have any video ideas, let us know. Uh, with NFL Game Pass being down right now, it makes it tough. Uh, we do have some college film. And with that being said, uh, next week's video, we're going to go over some Joe, Joe Brady offense with LSU. And we're going to try to see if we can project Sam Darnold and how he's going to do in that offense in Carolina this year. Thanks for tuning in, guys. We'll see you next week.